Yeah. And I know you hit it on, on it a second ago. For me, I'm genuinely confused on kind of the interpretation of the pass interference call and, and the new rule. From a player standpoint, are y'all a little confused too? Is that fair to say? Absolutely. Uh, especially with like Ted Ginn's, his P.I., and then they overturned their P.I. when they challenged it in the end zone, which was within five yards, and all he did was just kind of swipe his arm. So um, I don't know necessarily what the refs are looking for, but they, we knew going into this game that they were the number one uh, referee uh, team for calling offensive pass interference. So. I mean, it just is what it is. Your p offensive pass interference call up the seam. Could, mm -hmm. could you just take me through that play? And I mean, I know you mentioned you, you kind of feel like you went about it the way that you're taught. W w what did you see on that play? Um, it was outside leverage man. He just kind of sat on the numbers. And when I went to stretch him, uh, he just sat there and put his hands on me first. And I went to go clear my workspace, came out of it and caught the ball. Uh, I guess they didn't like the way I cleared it. But like I said, I was taught to do that. I'm coached to do that and um, I'll continue to do it. My last thought for you, look, even though as ugly as it was, you still get a division win, you still come out on top. Do you feel like that can be any type of moral victory that you can still overcome what was a sloppy game and come out with a victory? Um, I wouldn't say that, but it's a lot of things that we got to work on. Yeah. It's a lot of things uh, internally we got to work on. We got a short week and big games that's still coming up um, in this division. So we just got to keep pressing and keep getting better. Thank you, Jerry. So appreciate Already. it, man. Saint Saturday, Jared Cook. Doug, we'll send it back to you. Just, I mean, have you felt the game, 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 game? It looks to be just like a constant. Confidence has never been an issue. Uh, it's just, it's, it's about opportunities, man. You know, it's about making the best of the opportunities that you're given. So uh, that's what I'll continue to do and continue to try to do. How important was it for you to just, you know, kind of flush that pass interference play and just keep moving forward and you know, kind of work on, you know, focus on having a tough game. Uh, it's huge and it's tough. That's probably one of the toughest things to do in our sport is to uh, think next play and forget the last. Uh, but I had to because it was such a huge play at, at, at a big part of the game when we got momentum. Um, so it's, it's something that you have to do in this game. It's, it's imperative and it's, it's, it's basically mandatory. Did anybody say anything to you afterward or did they just kind of leave you alone? Yeah, I mean, everybody thought it was it wasn't the right call. Even my coach just told me to keep my head in it, but like I said before, that's mandatory. If you look at a game like this, you have a touchdown, two touchdown lead a couple of times, and it goes back and forth. How do you, I know it's just a broad question, and even though you get the win, how do you look at it overall after getting a win like this? Um, I feel like it's huge for us, but you know, I feel like we could have done a lot. A lot of things better to make the game not as close as it was. I think a lot of things was on us, uh, not only offensively, but defensively as well. Uh, and I think those are some things that we can improve on. I know some of the penalties may have not been controlled by you. Cam says could be human error. <laughs> but, but to have 12 penalties, I know Sean doesn't really like yeah. 12 penalties. Huh? Sloppy is that to you guys? Is that is one it, of the things that is a factor to a game like this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, those are things that you don't want. Like I said, those are things that we got to improve on and get better on. Uh, whatever we're doing uh, to draw the attention from those guys, we got to stop doing it. Breeze in a two-minute drill. And never a doubt. I mean, it seems like he does it no matter what. You could be down and you get the ball in his hand two minutes or less. He a goat, man. What you think? <laughs> Oh, okay. After the, <laughs> after the bye week, you talked about wanting to build a rapport with Drew Brees. Mm -hmm. From that to where you are now, how have you seen that develop? Um, I think it's getting a lot better, um, especially now that he's back off injury. I'm back off injury. We have that time now to just kind of uh, run through a lot of things. and. Uh, like I said, just communicate. That's the biggest thing. Just talk to some things, communicate, understand how him and Coach no, Payton want things, and just continue to work. He, he's, I don't know if anybody will say this publicly, but certainly this team has, has had in years a seam guy, mm -hmm. and they haven't really had that in the last couple of years. But mm -hmm. You seem to be emerging as that role. That, when you're talking about communication between you and George, that's got to be a big, a big point of that. You down the seam. Absolutely. Not only down the seam, but just down the field. Um, I provide a big target for him to be able to jam balls in uh, different spaces uh, and for him to be able to see down the field as well. So uh, not only the scene, but middle of the field, outside, wherever they put me, it's just a big target for him to be able to find me.